Hi everybody, this will be part three in the character textures tutorial series. Uh, the previous video we talked about how to set up our Substance Painter project, import our model, rename materials, and get ready to start creating uh, the textual detail for our character. Uh, so just as a reminder, I've come in here and I actually have two UV sets, one for the main body, uh, and that's going to be my main texture for the character. And then just for this demo, I've also created some cloth. Uh, so this is a cloth material, a separate UV set for the cloth. And I'm going to use this to demo how to create uh, opacity uh, within Substance Painter and then how to get that back into Maya properly. So let's work on the body first. I'm going to turn off my cloth layer and look at my body geometry. So this video we're going to talk about uh, some more setup and starting to create some base textural layers here. Uh, we'll even incorporate mask and how to mask out certain areas uh, in an easy way per layer. So with the body selected, uh, I should be able to see my UVs. Um, and uh, the first thing I usually do is I'm going to try to take use or uh, have the availability to use both materials and smart materials. We can even go into brushes and generators and things like that. Uh, but the smart materials uh, are different from the regular materials, as in the smart materials give me the option to, uh, to generate different detail uh, that looks at various parts of the geometry. So if the geometry is flatter, like the stomach area, or if the geometry is more curved, like around the arms or around the fingers or the facial features, or if the geometry has sharper edges or closer to other areas of the body, like around the shirt sleeve, um, that's what the smart materials can take advantage of. So to begin with, what I always do is come in here and I'm going to go with this material of the body selected or the texture set list. I'm going to go to texture set settings. We'll roll this down temporarily. Here are all the maps that it's going to build as default whenever I build new layers or have the opportunity to build this detail when new layers uh, are created, new materials are created. And what we're going to do is we need to bake these additional mesh maps. And here are the ones that uh, we can create with this. If you have created a high polygon model for something like ZBrush or Mudbox, uh, we could have imported and created a normal map from a high polygon model. Um, if we go to um, Project Configurations under Edit, um, we would reload this and uh, I think it might actually have to be done in the new or in a, a new file. So at the bottom of a new file, it has a section for importing a high polygon model. You can do that in Substance Painter, or we could also do that in Substance Designer that has much more refined tools of how it's pulling that normal map detail. We can also pull all the maps out from high polygon models, such as an ambient inclusion map, curvature, position, thickness <clears throat> that can be used with smart materials. What we're going to do is just look at the same low polygon model to build the mesh maps from them. And these are the mesh maps it's going to try to build. The only one it's probably not going to build is the ID map, which is the color vertex ID. Um, so let's click on base mesh maps. And we're going to look at this and see how it's going to build it. So the only thing I'm really going to change is the output size to 2048 because that's the same size as my other texture maps. Um, now in that, we can come in here and look at our normal map settings or our world space normal settings. We don't have any parameters that we're going to make adjustments to. Um, but if we were pulling from a high polygon model, we could make adjustments of how it's built and all of that. Something I'm really changing is changing the output size of 2048 to match my texture map sizes. Um, and then we're going to do bake body mesh maps. We'll let it run through its process. It's going to run through each one of these maps, look at the geometry, build these maps according to the way the geometry looks. It always builds these maps as a texture map as well that can then be exported out of Substance Painter and used in a lot of ways in like Substance Designer, um, in Maya, in Game Engine. So it's running through the different maps and producing them and building them out. So the one, as it says here, is finished 100%. It did not build as that body uh, vertex ID, uh, which is fine. We're not going to use that anyway for what we'll, we're using this for. We'll click OK. Here are all my different maps that it's building uh, from the look of the geometry. And that way, all the smart materials will work properly. 
Um, so the first thing I do is just build the bake mesh maps uh, in my scene. Uh, I know my final output is going into Maya, so something else uh, I usually change is the environment reflection map so that it more in tune is in tune with the way Maya's Stingray PBS reflection maps work. Um, so I'm going to come in here and I always forget which one it is, shader settings. That's how we can change the type of material. We're not going to make that adjustment, so it's not in that. Um, it's the display settings. Yep, so display settings. So as default, uh, I can turn up the environment opacity, uh, turn down the environment blur, and that way it'll show me the exact map uh, that is reflecting on this object. So anything that needs to have more a metallic look or reflective surfaces, the eyeballs would be reflecting the environment uh, more. We can, it's going to reflect this map, but that's not as accurate according to Maya's reflection maps uh, with the Stingray PBS material. So it's currently using the Panorama one, which is all right, but the one that's uh, I've found that's the most close to Maya's reflection map, it's not exact, but with the colors and uh, the environment is the uh, Mondarian. Uh, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but is this one right here, the Mondarian 3. So I'm going to change the environment map from Panorama to this Mondarian, Mondar Mondarian, Mondarian uh, however you pronounce that. Um, so we're going to change that, and that changes the actual map in the background. What that does is makes the uh, metallic look a little bit more bluer than the yellow that the um, panorama one does. I don't really need to see the environment, so that's just a visual choice. Sometimes I like to just have it um, a low opacity and a little bit of a blur to it so that I can see uh, or have reference of what type of map is actually going to be reflecting. Uh, if you know you go into a game engine with a different specific reflection map that it's producing, then you would change the environment map in here to match something more closely to what the final render look for it is. We're going to go back to Maya, so I'm going to try to do that in Maya. Um, we can also turn on things like shadows, which is a good for a final render, but as we're creating textures, we want to keep shadows off. There's a lot of other things we can do from the display window, like turn on the mesh wireframe. That's helpful to be able to see. You can turn on the wireframe opacity as well. That's kind of nice to have a low wireframe opacity on there, uh, but I usually will turn that on and off as I need it. Um, so that is the display settings. And all I did is just change the environment map. All right, so now we're ready to start creating textures, baking additional mesh maps, changing the environment map uh, for the uh, background and any reflective materials. Uh, so now we're ready to create layers. So we'll wrap this video up here. In the next video, we'll come back and talk about how to create layers and how to mask things off so that way we can understand how to uh, more accurately block out our textures per different type of material that we need.